Kevin here from DIYDwarf.com. Today I'm going to show you how I turned an old dresser drawer into an ottoman, so check this out. Alright, so I'm going to turn this drawer into an ottoman. It's going to have hairpin legs and it's going to have a padded top with a really cool fabric I found. And uh, anyway, this drawer is left over from the project I just finished not too long ago where I took that old beat up dresser and I turned it into a really cool kitchen island. And anyway, this was the one drawer that was still in good condition, so I need to smooth it out a little bit. It's got some rough paint on there, and then the back side's going to need a little bit of Bondo work. But anyway, I'll sand it smooth, and I'll repaint it. I haven't quite decided what color just yet. And then i got to beef it up a little bit. So one of these pieces of plywood is going to go underneath the bottom to make a nice strong base to mount the uh, legs. And then the other two pieces are going to make a top. So one of the uh, pieces of plywood will just fit inside the lines of the uh, top of the drawer so it fits in there so it won't slide around and then the other one the big thicker one here it's three quarter inch thick is going to sit on top of that and that's the one that's going to get padding and the fabric on there and then they'll be sandwiched together and uh, you know it'd be a nice heavy duty top that you can lift off and use for storage so this shouldn't be too difficult of a project and I think it's going to turn out pretty awesome so let me get started all right so the first thing I'm going to do is work on my leg base here on the bottom so there's a couple ways I can go about doing it. The real simple way is just to cut my plywood to the same outer dimensions as this, set it on there with some glue, pop in some nails, and it'd be ready to go. As soon as that glue is dry, it'd be nice and strong. But my main issue is that I have height differences here that I have to deal with. So my back panel here is only seven and seven eighths tall, all right? And my front panel is eight and an eighth. So there's a quarter inch difference. So this top, uh, the front piece here is a quarter inch higher than my back. So and my sides are even kind of in between those two. So my main issue is that I'd have to run the whole thing through a table saw. It'd be a little bit of trouble I don't want to mess with today. And I'm trying to keep this simple in case anyone's watching this and they don't have any tools like a um, table saw, you know, so I just want to keep it real basic. So I'll use my second option and that is just to cut my plywood to fit inside the box here. Okay, it'll just be a real nice tight fit. The main issue with that though is that this is not near enough strong enough to hold the, the weight of everything else. So my strength is going to come through the sides. So I'll make sure it's a snug fit. I'll put in lots of glue so it's glued to the sides and I'll even run in some screws and maybe even a few nails just to help hold it together real tight. It should be ready to go. Be real simple. I'll just have to remove that piece, pop it in, no problem. So let me do that next. So I got that uh, plywood mounted to the bottom here. It's nice and strong. Got the screws holding it in real secure. And then after it was put in, I went over it again one more time with glue around the edge, almost like caulking, to make sure it got in there so it was nice and strong. So now what I can do is start working on the top piece. All right, so that bottom piece of plywood was half inch thick, but my top piece here is three quarter inch thick. That way it'd be a lot stronger, it could hold more weight. And I wanted it to rise up just a little bit higher than the front of the drawer here. So this actually worked out real nice. Also, my little scrap piece just happened to be the exact same width as my drawer, which worked out nice, but I do need to cut it back here. So before I just go and slice that off, I decided to go ahead and give it just a little bit of gap here. As you can see, it's probably like 3 16 or eighth inch, somewhere around there. But I gave it a little bit because I'm gonna wrap this thing in batting, several layers of batting, and then also fabric. So it's gonna puff out a little bit around all the edges. So I just wanna make sure that I have room for that here. And then what I'll do is take my pen and just trace back here. All right, and then take it outside and cut it and it should fit real nice. And then I can start figuring out how I'm gonna actually wrap it and then build the little bottom plate for it after that. All right, so I got the top plate all cut to size and I smoothed it out with 120 grit sandpaper to prevent like splinters or snags or anything like that. I rounded off the edges a little bit and then I even rounded off the corners and that way hopefully it'll keep it from like ripping the batting or the fabric when people are like lifting it off or just sitting on it and things like that. So it should be ready to go. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and wrap it probably in three or four layers of batting so it has a you know, pretty good cushion to it and then I'll put the fabric around. And uh, I may not do a total in-depth, uh, you know, quick reupholstery job here on video, but I do have another video um, that shows how I rewrap a chair 
that uh, I'll link to in the description that gives you more details and I also made a pallet bench a while back very similar to this if you want a few more details on that so anyway let me get that finished and then I can figure out how to make that bottom plate All right, check it out. Fits really nice now, looks cool. The uh, upholstery turned out real nice and firm, and I said I was gonna use three or four layers of my batting, but it ended up being really thin, so I actually used six layers on here. And then this fabric's just really cool. So now what I gotta do is build that bottom plate that kind of locks it into place to keep it from shifting around. And it'll also just kind of cover up my cut edges and all that, make it look nice and finished. So what I decided to do was I wanna make it the same dimensions as the inside of the box. Except, hopefully this kind of makes sense, but you can see how the back of my top is flush with the back side of this. So there's like a half inch thickness here. All right, so my, my uh, bottom plate has to be inset, that half inch. So I think I'm also going to add a half inch here inset. So that way, if someone sat it down, it could fit either way. All right, so I'll go ahead, just measure this out, subtract whatever that width is. And then I'll also just cut it maybe just like a hair narrower, maybe about the width of the blade. So that way it has just a little bit of wiggle room so it's easy to slide on and off. Should be easy to make it. Then I'll just sand it smooth and paint it white. And then I can move on to painting the box here. All right, so I got it sanded nice and smooth, rounded off the corners and the edges so that it doesn't cause any splinters or anything like that. And then I centered it onto my top, my upholstered top, and then I just put in two screws in the middle just to kind of test it out, see how it fits. And check it out, it works really nice. So drops into place there, and then I can even spin it around and it fits well that way also. So now that it's ready to go, what I'm gonna do is go ahead and pull this bottom part off again and I will prime and paint it white. And then I need to work on the body. I'm gonna sand this old paint, smooth it out. I gotta sand the edges, um, do a little bondo work to fill in these holes and a couple little splits and stuff on there. And then I'll smooth it and then I'll prime and paint it white as well. And then the last thing I gotta do is I gotta put the handle back on after I paint it silver. And then those hairpin legs, I'm gonna paint them silver as well. And then this thing can be put together and it should turn out pretty cool. Alright, so I was putting this thing together and test fitting it, make sure it works. And it looks pretty cool, but there's something off about it. I think it's the proportion of the actual drawer to the top it means there's just way too much white. I think the best way to fix that, it already has this really cool design on here, kind of a sunburst shaped square. So I think I'm going to tape that off and paint that this light blue that matches the stripe. I think that will add just the right element to make this thing pop a little better, just a little bit too much white. So let me do that and then I'll show you what this whole thing looks like when it's finished. Alright, and check it out. Here it is all finished. Turned out really nice. So up here on top, I like this fabric. I thought that was a really interesting pattern on there. And it lifts off real easy. It's got that little wood plate on the bottom that keeps it in position. And of course there's tons of storage. You can put anything you want in there. It's big enough for pillows and blankets and a whole bunch of magazines or whatever you wanted to put in there. Tons and tons of room. And then uh, the padded top itself, like I said, I used six layers of batting because it was kind of thin. And it kept it low profile, but still padded enough. You could pop your feet on there, you could sit on it, or you could even use it as a tabletop because it's firm enough for that. But if you wanted even more padding, what you could do is when you're building that top, to get one of those little pieces of green foam that's like 
inch and a half, two inches thick and spray glue it on your wood and then wrap that in about two or three layers of batting to kind of round off the edges and you get a lot more padding, it'd be even more cushioned to it and it'd look pretty cool as well. But I just kept it real simple with just the batting. Alright, so then for the body, I painted it the gloss white, turned out really nice, but like I said, it was a bit much. Thought it needed to be balanced out a little more. So I was going to uh, paint this part right here to match this light blue stripe right there. But once I got my spray paint out and I kind of sat it next to this, I thought it was still a little bit light. So I decided to go with a midnight blue instead, a little bit darker, a little heavier. I think it balances it out better. It also helps make that little handle right here that I painted silver pop out really nice. And it looks good with the silver painted hairpin legs too. So anyway, there you go. It was actually a pretty simple project and that uh, turned out really nice. And that's how you turn a drawer into an ottoman. Hey, thanks for checking out this video. I really appreciate that. If you liked it, go ahead and hit that thumbs up. That really helps get it out in front of other people that might like to check it out too. And if you haven't subscribed, be sure to do that to keep up with more videos. And if you want to see some other projects I have, I have some here on the screen and down in the description below as well.